Hey everyone, I'm Takeyama and welcome to my graphics guide for WoW PvP. I'm going to start off by explaining some in-game settings, and then I'll demonstrate how to best tune your PC for maximum performance. These tips are going to be listed in order from easy to difficult. So if at any point in the video you decide you just can't do this anymore and you need a break from settings to do some gaming, then you can stop at any time and pick up where you left off. Just a disclaimer, this is not a guide for my add-ons, but that video will be linked in the description as soon as the video goes live. So once you're in the game, open the game menu by pressing escape. Click on options at the top, then enable sticky targeting. Under mouse, set mouse look speed to 1 and disable mouse sensitivity. And for camera, set auto follow speed to 1 and camera following style to never adjust camera. Now on the left, click on interface and under nameplates, enable always show nameplates, enemy unit nameplates, minions, and disable minor nameplates. The Better Blizz plates add-on will help us show specific minor nameplates, but you don't need all of them to be shown. Then make sure that the nameplate motion type is set to overlapping nameplates. Scroll down to raid frames and make sure that display class colors is enabled. And back to the left under action bars, make sure that show numbers for cooldowns is enabled and lock your action bars. In combat settings, enable target of target. Do not flash screen at low health unless you feel like you need it. Loss of control alerts and make sure that action targeting is disabled. In general settings, make sure motion sickness is checked and spell alert opacity is 100%. Now that we've gotten that stuff out of the way, go over to audio settings really quick. Under audio settings, scroll down and make sure that your error speech is disabled and that your audio channels and cache size are set to 64 megabytes. This will increase your performance and free up memory or RAM on your PC. Okay, now graphic settings. Most of these settings can be left default, but we're going to change a few drop down boxes. Make sure that your game is running at the same resolution as your monitor. In my case, I'm using a 4K TV, but Twitch will only allow me to stream in 1080p, so I scale my resolution down to 1080p in my graphics driver settings. However, in game, make sure that your render scale is set to 100%. You can scale this down even more, but the FPS benefit is small, and if you upscale, you will lose a significant amount of FPS. UI scale should be set to 65% to prevent screen clutter and make it easier to use the interface. However, if this is too small for your liking, I totally understand, but I do recommend tuning this as low as you can stand it. VSync disabled. If you have screen tearing as a result of not generating enough FPS above your monitor's refresh rate, then you can enable this along with triple buffering. However, the more FPS your PC can generate above your monitor's refresh rate, the less screen tearing will occur. So it's better to solve screen tears by lowering your graphics settings and disabling VSync, rather than running high graphics settings with VSync on. VSync and triple buffering double your input lag. It's best to turn them off for CPU-based games like WoW and CSGO, and on for GPU-based games like Skyrim or The Witcher 3. Low latency mode, set this to built-in, or if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, use NVIDIA Reflex. And if you also have a G-Sync or a FreeSync monitor, then use NVIDIA Reflex plus Boost. If you're unsure if your monitor supports G-Sync, I'll explain that later in this video. Essentially, this setting will tell your game to limit the amount of pre-rendered frames on your graphics card, which avoids rendering too many frames and bottlenecking with the CPU, which processes those frames. This setting is especially important for reducing the impact on your CPU and lowering your input lag, making for a smoother camera and better FPS. Anti-aliasing, none. This setting will reduce jagged lines and make the game's graphics look smoother. However, any increase to your graphics settings will reduce your FPS and also increase the latency of your game, meaning that your PC will take even more time to register your keyboard and mouse inputs. So if you want to min-max settings for PvP or Mythic PvE, then definitely set this as low as you can. Multi-sample alpha test increases the effectiveness of your multi-sample anti-aliasing techniques, which also costs more GPU resources. So for PvP, make sure this is disabled. FOV 90 is the best setting for situational awareness, since this will allow you to see more of your game on your screen and where your enemies are positioned. Under graphics quality, set the slider to 1. Make sure spell density is set to everything and projected textures is set to enabled so that you see all the spell effects like Ring of Frost for example. Also for view distance, higher view distances will not only cost more FPS, it will also increase load screen times. It's important to note that certain settings like ground clutter and particle density increase the CPU workload. Your CPU is responsible for processing the frames generated by your GPU, so we want our CPU to be as free as possible to handle frames per second to minimize any frame drops. Under advanced, make sure triple buffering is unchecked. Texture filtering should be set to bilinear for the best performance or 16x for better textures. Ray trace shadows disabled. Ray tracing is the setting responsible for massive frame drops when mages use ice wall. Ambient occlusion type, fidelity FX cacao. So this setting will tell your PC to use ambient occlusion on either your GPU with Asseo or CPU with Fidelity FX Cacao. 
Since I'm usually streaming, which takes up a lot of CPU resources, I set this to ASAO. However, if you're not streaming or recording in the background, then use Fidelity FX Cacao to free up GPU resources and make the game run more efficiently. Resample quality. So unless you have an AMD graphics card, I recommend setting this to bicubic. This setting only applies whenever you're upscaling the game's resolution, which is very GPU demanding. So for the best FPS for PvP, again, make sure you're on your native resolution and that render scale is set to 100%. VRS mode aggressive is the best setting for FPS, however on certain PvP maps this can make your game look so bad that it hurts your eyes. I recommend setting this to standard unless you really need the extra FPS. If you're getting an error that reads unsupported for graphics related reasons, then make sure that your anti-aliasing is set to none for both image and multi-sample techniques. Then select anti-aliasing none and save and exit. When you reopen the menu, you should be able to use VRS mode. Graphics API, always direct X12. Physics interactions, none. Graphics card, select your graphics card. Max foreground FPS, 200. This will allow your game to render extra FPS, which lowers input lag, prevents overheating, and reduces screen tearing. By the way, it's better to set your FPS cap in game instead of a third party program. Max background FPS, 200. Target FPS unchecked. Resample sharpness? So this setting will only apply if you force it on with advanced interface options or if you use upscaling. However, it is using your GPU to increase the sharpness of textures, so it's best to turn this all the way down for the best performance. Contrast, brightness, and gamma are personal preference and have no impact on the game's performance. Compatibility settings, TLDR, all checked. Optional GPU features should be checked and will allow your PC to use low latency settings. Asynchronous resource creation, checked unless you have a really old graphics card. Multi-threaded rendering, checked. Frame overlap, checked. Advanced work submit, checked. Now I want to quickly show my settings because I actually try to find a middle ground between good graphics and FPS for a better Twitch stream, and some of my choices might inform you on the best settings for your equipment. Resolution 1920, Render Scale 100, UI Scale 65, V-Sync Disabled, Low Latency Mode, NVIDIA Reflex, Anti-Aliasing Advanced, Image Techniques CMA A2, Multi-Sample Techniques Color 2X, Depth 2X, Alpha Test Disabled, FOV 90, Base Quality 1, Shadow Quality High, Liquid Quality Low, Particle Density high, SSAO disabled, depth effects low, compute effects disabled, outline mode good, texture resolution high, spell density everything, projected textures enabled, view distance 4, environment detail 3, ground clutter 1, triple buffering disabled, texture filtering 16x, ray trace shadows high but disabled if I know the enemy has ice wall, ambient occlusion type assayo to reduce the impact on my CPU, resample quality bicubic, VRS mode disabled, graphics API DirectX 12, physics interactions none, graphics card NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, max foreground FPS 200, max background FPS 60, target FPS disabled, resample sharpness 0, contrast 50, brightness 50, gamma one and all compatibility settings enabled. So now that we've tuned our in-game settings, I also want to explain how to make your PC run the game at maximum performance. I'm going to start off by explaining my GeForce control panel settings, however this interface may be different depending on your graphics card. I'm using an NVIDIA GeForce 3080, so my computer comes with the control panel pre-installed. Now before we even get into the control panel, we need to make sure our graphics driver is up to date. Everyone knows that GeForce Experience is a spying piece of garbage, and it's far better to update your drivers using Display Driver on installer to remove any old drivers and update them fresh with NVCI clean install. These programs in the description will allow you to install the best drivers for your NVIDIA graphics card without installing a ton of pointless GeForce software that runs in the background taking up performance. Once you've downloaded DDU and NVCI clean install, run DDU. Once it opens the options page, check remove PhysX and close the options menu. It's totally okay to not run in safe mode, but you can if you want to. Then on the right side, click on select device type, then click GPU. Don't click the big yellow button. Instead, go over to the left side and click clean and restart. It's important to know that when your computer starts up, it won't have a graphics driver installed. So things will be running very slowly, but this is to be expected. Just be careful not to open a bunch of programs when you first log in, so you don't slow yourself down. Now go back to your downloads and run NVCI clean install. Install the best drivers for your hardware, then click next. On the components page, click on recommended and add Microsoft Visual C 2017 runtimes and click next. Now the program will download your driver
And once that's completed, click Next through the Installation Tweaks page, and then Install. Agree and Continue, Express Installation, Next, and then Install. And as you can see from the Task Manager, NVIDIA Container now only takes up half of the resources that it used to. So once you've properly updated your graphics driver, we can now open the NVIDIA Control Panel. Right away, we're going to edit our 3D settings, specifically the global settings first. I know this looks intimidating, but I promise it's just drop-down menus. Make sure image scaling is off, low latency mode is on, or ultra for G-Sync monitors, power management mode is set to prefer maximum performance, preferred refresh rate should be on highest available, and finally, V-Sync and triple buffering set to on. However, if your monitor supports NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync, then you can turn V-Sync and triple buffering off, since your monitor is going to dynamically match the FPS of the current program running in the foreground. Now navigate to the Program Settings tab and select Retail WoW as the program you want to customize. If you don't see WoW in the list, then simply click Add and then add your WoW.exe file in World of Warcraft slash Retail. Now for World of Warcraft specifically, this will be different for other games. Set Low Latency Mode to Off, and as you can see in the tooltip, this is going to allow the game to set the Low Latency Mode, which will give you slightly better latency compared to when NVIDIA Control Panel is enforcing Low Latency Mode. Now scroll down and set V-Sync and Triple Buffering to Off, even if you don't have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor. This is because we want the game to be controlling these settings directly to give us better performance. Now click Apply. Lastly, on the left side under Configure PhysX, make sure PhysX settings are being processed on your GPU. And in Display, click on Adjust Desktop Size and Position, and make sure the scaling is being performed on the display and not your GPU. Now, if you don't have a G-Sync monitor and you're stuck at 60Hz refresh rate, there's actually a trick in the NVIDIA Control Panel that might work for your system that will allow you to double your refresh rate. This is only recommended if you do not have a G-Sync monitor, as increasing the refresh rate would be counterintuitive to the technology of G-Sync and FreeSync. So if you're like me and you normally only get 60Hz, then go into the NVIDIA Control Panel and under Display, click on Change Resolution. Under the Resolution menu, the PC will automatically list resolutions that your monitor can scale to. Click around on each of these values, specifically the one that is half of your native resolution, and check to see if your monitor supports a higher refresh rate for lower resolutions. For example, on my 4K TV, I can scale my resolution resolution to 1080p, which unlocks the 120Hz refresh rate on my monitor. Higher refresh rate means that our system can now generate twice the amount of frames as before, since it only has to cover half the resolution. This makes a huge difference in game, but because videos only go up to 60fps, the buttery smoothness is something you're just going to have to experience for yourself. And that's it! You can now close Control Panel. Now earlier I recommended that you use NVCI Clean Install to update your graphics drivers instead of NVIDIA GeForce Experience, and the reason why can be explained using the Task Manager. So go ahead and press Control Shift Escape, or right click your taskbar to open the Task Manager. Once it's open, make sure to take note of the Performance tab. This interface will display your current graphics card and CPU. You can search online to see how your equipment is stacking up to the latest releases and decide if you need upgrades. Back to the Processes tab, take note of your PC's CPU and memory usage with everything closed. These base values will come with you and be added to every game you play. So ideally, we want the CPU and memory to be as low as possible, so that when we're playing a game, these resources aren't being hogged by other programs in the background causing FPS drops. This especially includes animated wallpapers, which take up way more resources compared to still images. So go through your task manager and make sure that you're aware of every single third-party program running on your PC. And if you have a tinfoil hat like I do, you can install Process Explorer from the Microsoft Store to make sure that the programs running are connected to legitimate IP addresses. However, this is not a video on how to check if you have a virus on your PC, and I am not an expert in that field. A great tool for closing default background apps is ONO Shutup 10++. This program linked in the description will minimize the amount of resources that Windows uses by default while still maintaining the full functionality of your PC. You heard that right. Microsoft is using your PC the entire time you're trying to use it, making everything slower for no reason. So once you've installed the program, click on Actions, then Apply Only Recommended Settings, click OK, and close the program and restart. Once you've closed all unnecessary apps in the background, the last step I want to alert you of is to check if your PC uses overclocking. I used a PC with overclocking capability without knowing for years, without ever getting the full power out of my CPU and constantly overheating my PC. I have a pre-built Alienware Aurora R12 that I got as a Christmas gift, which comes with the Alienware Command Center software. 
This is going to be different depending on your PC, but if you want to know if your CPU is even capable of overclocking, it's important to research your own machine and get familiar with your own BIOS software. I know people make BIOS sound very scary, but don't sweat it. Just follow the directions and video walkthroughs, don't change anything you aren't sure about, and try not to explore the software. It's best to get into the BIOS, make the proper changes, and then get back to gaming. Now once your computer is running at the maximum efficiency, we can now start the game. And as you can see with World of Warcraft running, my CPU and GPU values are low enough to compensate for when the game loads tons of particle effects, or loads players into an instance layer, so that my FPS never drops below my monitor's refresh rate, aka no frame drops or stutters. It's important to note that add-ons also demand CPU and RAM, or memory, and you can actually check how much memory your add-ons are using by mousing over the game menu icon in the micro bar. If you have a slower system, then using zero or almost no add-ons to make sure you don't drop FPS is far more valuable than having add-ons. If you want to make sure that you have the best UI for PvP, then check out this video here on screen. Thanks for watching, and let me know if these tips helped or not by liking or disliking the video, and I'll see you in the next one.